The forests of Asia are home to one of the most endangered mammals on Earth, the tiger. Every year, large amounts of money and manpower are invested for the conservation of the species. But how can we tell if these investments are working? Only through monitoring if tiger populations are going up, going down or holding steady. This training video will demonstrate modern, scientific methods for monitoring tigers and their prey. Monitoring tigers is by no means easy, for they are secretive predators that are rarely seen, except in a few reserves where some tigers have become habituated to tourism. A majority of tigers lead solitary, hidden lives in thick jungle and are often nocturnal in their habits. How then do we keep track of their numbers? Since tigers don't live in communities, we can't simply go from cave to cave and conduct a census. Fortunately, there are other ways and biologists like Dr. Ullas Karant of the Wildlife Conservation Society have developed reliable, scientific methods for estimating tiger numbers. If these methods are followed meticulously, it is possible to keep track of tiger populations. However, even the best methods should not be practiced blindly. To produce reliable results, they have to be combined with a basic knowledge of tiger biology, such as how much space do tigers need? What kind of habitat do they prefer? What do they eat and how much? One important fact is that there is a direct correlation between the number of prey animals in a forest and the number of tigers the forest can support. Each adult tiger needs about 3,000 kilograms of live prey every year. They need large-sized prey and lots of it. To survive, a tiger needs to kill about 50 to 60 deer-sized prey animals per year. So, for every single tiger in a forest, there needs to be a population of at least 500 prey animals that produce a surplus of 50 animals for the tiger to eat each year. Therefore, counting the number of prey animals in a forest will give us a rough idea of how many tigers the forest can support. That's why monitoring tiger numbers also involves counting the number of prey animals in a forest. But this is easier said than done, as prey animals are alert and elusive. Often they live in thick jungle and are not easily seen. Therefore, animal censuses through direct counts do not work in forested landscapes. We can only estimate animal numbers. And to do this reliably, we need to use well-tested sampling techniques. Here is how the sampling method works for estimating prey animals in a forest. If we take a sample area of forest and thoroughly count the number of prey animals in it, we can extrapolate this information to estimate the number of prey animals in the entire forest However, this is complicated by the fact that forests often have different types of habitats with differing concentrations of herbivores. For instance, one part of a forest may have a high density of prey animals and another part could have a low density of prey animals. If we only sample the low density area and extrapolate this information to the entire forest, then we will end up underestimating the number of animals. On the other hand, if we sample only the high density area and extrapolate that information to the entire forest, we will end up with an overestimate. So, to get a reliable overall estimate, it is necessary to sample from all the representative habitats. There is one more factor to keep in mind. Even within the area that we sample, 
it is impossible to count all the animals that are present because in a forest some of the animals are seen and some remain hidden. So only a certain proportion of the total number of animals present can be detected by us while others go unseen. This is why we need to use sampling techniques. The scientific technique described in the next chapter is one of the reliable methods for sampling prey species.